So today we are talking about atmosphere. Whoa, camera lost focus there. Rain, you know, dust. I don't know if you saw Dune, but there was a lot of atmosphere in that movie. Uh, today, I actually wanted to talk about um, fog and mist. And uh, specifically, specifically, I wanted to talk about haze. What's up guys, Nick Friend, Friend Films. Thanks for coming back. Um, I'm actually gonna get a coffee. Uh, so, haze and fog, and, and mist, they all kind of like fall into the same category of atmosphere with like rain and dust and clouds and stuff like that. And the cool thing is, uh, the cool thing is you can use them for a multitude of different reasons. My favorite reason to use atmosphere or fog or whatever um, is to create a heightened sense of depth inside of the scene. Now there's a bunch of different ways to get the desired effect of haze or fog and using that to create depth. You can use things like, fil actually, I have a filter. I'll show you. <laughs> there we go. So this is a bloom filter by a company. Uh, you probably know them. They're called Moment. There we go. See, camera filter. I, I did a whole video that's gonna be up, up there. And so, yeah, so one way that you can actually have that sort of perceived misty kind of soft effect is with filters like that. But what that doesn't do is it doesn't really create depth inside of the scene with lighting and with the actual environment. It just affects the overall image. It's kind of like putting a LUT on your image. It affects the entire thing, but doesn't affect like specific parts of it. So I actually made an entire uh, three episode series about creating depth in imagery, which you can find at that little card. That was a really fun exploration in how to create depth inside of the, uh, your image on like the cheap and cheerful kind of, kind of way. Today we're taking a step up. So originally we'd use stuff like this and this is called atmosphere aerosol and it's like 12 or 15 bucks a can, I don't even remember. Um, but this stuff is fantastic if you're in a pinch and you really need to create that real analog atmosphere. Here, we can just go ahead and spray some of this stuff around, ready? So you do that and then you would waft it around. Oh, let's use a pillow. It's like Prince music video. So you can do, you can do something like that. It creates a little bit more separation. Um, but the thing, here's the thing about this. Uh, this is mineral oil that's been compressed. Uh, so this is an oil-based aerosol. And the result is that it creates like a thin layer of oil on everything, which I'm, I don't really like. But again, in a pinch, this stuff works great. But what I really wanted to talk to you guys about is this guy. So this is called the Haze 1DX. This one is actually what's called a hazer. Now, what is the difference between a fogger and a hazer? That's what we're talking about first. So the main difference between fog and haze is basically density. If you use a fogger, you're going to have a much more dense and much more um, effects driven uh, atmosphere. It's going to be very, very thick. It's going to kind of stick to itself. It's not gonna really be dispersed too much, um, it's gonna take up less volume and have more density. With a hazer, it's going to take up much more volume and have less density between each individual little particle. Because that's what we're doing, is we're introducing little particles into the air, that light then bounces off, that creates that, that deep cinematic like separation. Something else about fog versus haze is fog is typically something that you can see, whereas haze has a more subtle feeling to it. So haze is really good for creating an overall aesthetic, whereas fog is more of an effect. So when you create a, a hazy atmosphere that you're shooting in, um, it has the ability to increase the perception of depth as well as increasing the isolation of your primary subject matter. That specifically is why people use haze. There's also a pretty wide spread between the price points that you can find for foggers and hazers. Um, and you can go as cheap as like a $40 Walmart special, which just kind of puts out this like plume of fog that you would see at like any show that you've been to. You can also get a, a hazer called a DF50, which is like the industry standard that you would find on a lot of productions uh, that actually have considerable budgets because it's like a $4,000 hazer. <laughs> I wanted to try to find something that kind of lived in the middle. So I found something that used the same sort of 
fluids and liquids that you would otherwise use in a fogger, but the machine itself was actually a hazer. And that's where the 1DX steps in, because it does have similarities to a fogger, but because it has a fan and it also uses a water-based fluid, it ends up being a much more thin and even particle that gets introduced into the air when I'm shooting a scene. I actually really, really like it. And it is like a 20th of the price of the DF50. This thing is only 270 bucks, and then I got some fluid for like 30 bucks. I think the best way to describe it is a, a happy medium between a fogger and a hazer. And the other thing about hazers is they're really simple to use. Like all you have to do is like you pour the fluid into the reservoir and then you plug it in and by plugging it in it kind of automatically turns on it heats up and then when you're ready for fog or haze you just turn a dial and it turns on it's really really easy to use and it can take an image from something like this to something like this right so i can talk about the hazer all day long but you probably want to see what it can do so last night i actually stayed up late and shot some example footage in my apartment and we can see the breakdown of how things leveled up with each introduction of atmospheric haze. So the first thing that I did was I took a little tiny light and I used it as like a fake computer screen in the background. So I have a tiny other little light right here that's actually mimicking the screen onto the back and so that's kind of in our background. After that, I took my key light, gelled it with some orange so I had like a nice kind of evening type look. And that was my primary lighting setup. After that, I incorporated the haze, and this is the result of what that actually helped me accomplish. Now, personally, I think that it looks much better with the haze because we have a higher degree of separation between myself and the background, and using those Accent lights in the background also helps increase that separation. One of the great things about using haze is that when you're shooting in a smaller environment, you're able to create a greater sense of depth, even when your subject in the background aren't very far away. All right, so this is what it looks like just without any light. This is nothing. I'm gonna turn on the backlight. Then we add atmosphere. It creates a lot more visual depth inside of the scene. I did that, it took me literally 10 minutes to warm up the machine, and it took me 30 seconds to add enough haze to a small little room like this. We can talk about haze and fog and mist and all these other crazy things about creating uh, depth and imagery with atmosphere. Um, I could do that all day long, but uh, there's a YouTuber by the name of Mark Bone who did an exceptional job explaining the differences between those three. I really just wanted to talk about this one little piece of kit that I got. Links for everything are gonna be down below, including Mark's YouTube channel. He's a brilliant documentarian, I highly recommend him. Um, that's all I have for this week. I will see you next time.